Okay, so part C is done. And the thing you need to think about with part C is you've got your stone set and you've done all of your finial details or whatever it is you had imagined. And if you don't like part C, you can just throw it out and try again and have another part C and do the same registration until you like the stone design or the shape or whatever it is you're doing. So the nice part about that is with part C, you don't have to use this one. You've done all of the hard work with your part A, B registration. But before you move forward, you will want to carve the sprue gates. Right? So one thing to be aware of is as you're doing this carving, right, you're going to need metal to flow all the way from here to here. And you need to get it to go all the way through these tiny contours to get the reservoir metal to the top of part C where your stone setting is. And so you really want to take the time to draw out how you're going to get your metal to flow and then make a trough deep enough so that you can do so. So let's switch to a pencil here. So you want to make sure you have enough material. Oh, come on. Let's try a better pencil. Here we go. So that you can have all of your metal flow to your band ring, but create a channel deep enough to get that metal to flow. So depending on how thick your cuttlefish is, you can dig a deep trough that's narrow, or you can dig a wide trough. It doesn't matter, but what you don't want to have is have your metal choke here and not give you a complete casting. So what I'm going to do is make this just a little bit wider and then have the flow make as big a target as you want, right? Like how big do you want to make this? As big as you think you can pour. Remember, you're going to have a two to three foot handle on your crucible with a blowtorch. Everything is going to be on fire. And you just want to determine if I can get a bigger target to pour into, why wouldn't I, right? And then you can do the same thing for the opposite side as well, just making sure that you know part B and part A have a button carved in and a good clean pour gate. But it looks effectively like that on both sides. So I'm going to switch to time lapse and show that process. Okay, so you can see now we've carved out the sprue gate and an area for our button. The metal, let's put this in focus. Metal can flow down that entire trough all the way to our ring and then fill into part C, which is going to be our stone setting. And you can see in the very center here, there's a residual impression of where the band ring actually locks up in the design. So you can tell that the metal itself is going all the way into that flow point. Um, and we could make this thicker if we wanted, but if you look, it's probably three to four millimeters thick, which is pretty thick for a casting. So it's most likely not necessary, but we won't know until we cast. If it's a good casting day and nothing's too humid, there should be no issue but I'm leaving all of the parts visible so that we can see every part of the process. So this is part B, it's got the drawing. This is part A, this one's already carved out, right? And part C, which is the top. And part C can be replaced at any point before the casting. So if any point you decide you wanna change your mind, you don't like how you've done part C, you wanna do a different stone, you're already rammed up and ready to go, 
that's the last step you really need to decide on before you wire it up and lock in your registration. Okay, so we have the three parts that are getting put together, labeled part A, part B, and part C. And what we need to do is make sure that when we have our registration alignment, that we wire up A and B correctly and then register it so it fits within the footprint of part C and that notches are carved in part C and we have enough room to straddle a saddle joint in the wire app. So the first thing we're gonna do is carve out the back section of B. I will do that on time lapse, and then we'll come back and do the entire wired assembly. Okay, so we have part B and part A wired together, and we're making sure that our registration between A, B, and C is lined up. One thing we need to consider is how we're going to lash the top of A and B to the bottom of C, and where we need our registration marks to make sure that that happens. And the registration marks aren't actually for the alignment, they're just places for the wire to hook in. So we're gonna use our half round file to just carve some notches to aim for. And it gets tricky because your part gets more and more complex in shape as you go. So you just wanna give yourself something that will hold the wire firmly and just gently carve into that keratin side of the cuttlefish. And the trick here is as I'm holding the entire assembly together, I'm making sure that my Sharpie registration on the B side and my Sharpie registration on the A side are still in alignment, okay? And so when you go to wire wrap, you need to make sure that those registration marks are still present for you to follow when you're wiring this whole assembly together. And generally what I'll do for these complex surfaces is I will just pull a full length of wire and I'm wiring this with 20 gauge dead soft mild steel and just give yourself a little extra to work with. Two or three feet is sufficient. And then you're gonna cut it short as you go. So again, you wanna make sure that you've lined up part B and part A on part C before you start. So I'm checking the B registration, the A registration, and then I'm clamping it with my thumb on the top. And we're just gonna hold the material from the bottom and do the same style wrap that we had initially from the surface of the two faces A and B. So we're going to get that same X as we go. The only distinction here is that we've got a totally different saddle going on to part C. As we come around, go across the top. You want to make sure everything stays in place, that your registration hasn't slipped. And it's very hard because you're holding all these different components together while keeping track of every single part. But we've got X's on both sides, and we've got the bottom of part C wired together. So now we just need to twist the two wires tight. And at this point, you can check and make sure that C is lined up with A and B before you tighten everything down. You wanna make sure that as you tighten things down by twisting on the bottom, you don't lose your wraps on the shoulders of your cuttlefish and that you use the pliers to hold the material tight onto the surface. So you can do that by, again, making sure that you're saddled over the cuttlefish and then twisting the wire to give it a little extra tension as you go. You can do that with each of the wires on the X side. That gives you a fair amount of control 
And then just make sure for the last part that part A and part B still line up with their registration. So that's the three-part mold and we're ready to cast.